Oh, we have Kathy Warren, mm-hmm. Allie Lynch, Kelly Gibbons, and some brave sixth grade ladies right. that are here to tell us about one of the profiles that we created this school year. So last year, Kathy Drake and I worked with Kim Hanish of Knowledge Works to facilitate classes on learning pathways to cycle. So we presented those to the staff here at school. At the conclusion of the class, the, the three of us volunteered to be on the committee to create learner profiles for our K-12 students. Okay, our committee wanted to get kids, some kids involved. So um, we recruited these sixth grade girls, these very talented sixth grade girls to share their experiences <clears throat> with the high school teachers hoping for a future implementation in the high school. Um, so we they put their heads together, they whipped up this presentation during their recess time, their one recess day of the week, and during their exploratory time this fall, and then well, a couple of weeks ago, we rocked the presentation, they rocked the presentation for the high school teachers, and thus they're here to present that same presentation to you about learner profiles. Both learner profiles. Does anyone know what a uh, learner profile is? No, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> a learner profile is a collection of information about a learner, and it kind of explains what um, it explains how a student learns best and what topics they learn. Here's some examples of a learner profile. Um, okay, can you skip that? <laughs> they have, okay, so they interviewed a couple of kids, and sometimes the video works, and sometimes it doesn't. So, Trey and um, Kinsley were well, the presentation, but why do we need them? We need them so teachers can know more about us and learners can learn about them, but also how in their own voice. Our goal is that all K through 12 students um, upload their on the profiles to portfolios and Schoology at a time to be determined. Here's where the Schoology portfolios are. So you go up to that little circle up top and then you press portfolios on the left-hand side. And then in the middle, you press new portfolio. How to do it. Each year, the student will upload a new Schoology profile in Schoology and will be able to view their profile. Why it's important to us. It's important to us because the teachers can learn other habits we like and they connect with us on a deeper level. Also, it makes the learning more personalized. Examples of how it's more personalized. Susie only interests our Barbies, unicorns, rainbows, butterflies, and mermaids. Ty works best with a partner. He also prefers working on paper. The teachers can use this data to make the learning more personalized. Thanks for listening. And then we also shared this at the high school. So the grade four through six teachers when we implemented this fall, since we have so many students, we compiled the data into a spreadsheet. And then we look at that, we looked at the data during a meeting. So it's just easier to see, like for example, one of the teachers pointed out that the fourth graders, um, there's a few of the fourth graders that didn't have a teacher to that they, they could confide in. So we are we decided that kind of as a group that we're going to look into that later as the fourth graders get more comfortable we'll probably have to renew that section of the profile so that we make sure that the fourth graders all have someone to to go to if they need help um so that we don't have to do that but that's something that we did <laughs> they present great cases. Oh man, on Wednesday I heard it all. <laughs> so K through six wise, the staff has just take this and ran with it. In the next week, 
Everyone will have their learner profile submitted if they aren't done already. So in your packet are some examples of some completed learner profiles, as well as some blank ones um, ranging from the K through six level. Like the girls mentioned, four through six grade students will upload those digitally on Schoology. K through three learners, the teachers photocopy it and place it in a file that is kept with the learner's team file. Once they reach fourth grade, it will be uploaded digitally. So the hope is by the time they graduate, they will have a collection of all of their learner profiles K through 12. So they're really able to see their full educational journey at OPS. Beyond filling out the learner profile, teachers can utilize it however they want, which is the pic collages that you'll see at the end. That's a way for students to showcase who they are, and you can display those in the classroom. You can also use it to collect data, like Mrs. Warren showed in their presentation. So overall, this idea of learner profiles hits on a wide variety of the pillars of personalized learning. We can identify learner supports from what they say they need as a learner or their growth areas. We can also create learner-centered instruction by utilizing their interests and things that they like. And then we can also utilize it for flexible grouping by identifying their preferences, working by myself, working with others. And lastly, it really showcases learner voice as a whole, who they are as a person. So thanks for listening. Do you have any questions for us at all? So all learners K through six either do or will have oh, their current learner profile soon. How often then will those be updated? Overall, yearly, we see it as kind of a beginning of the school year activity, getting to know your learners. We talked about as educators, we see when they fluctuate. Um, so we we just notice some of those differences. We don't necessarily need it on a piece of paper as we get to know them better through the year. Um, but then Mrs. Warren pointed out, like, if you see concern areas like the students who did have a trusted adult, that's something you can revisit throughout the year. And they do change because mine were just finished and several of them put they like to work in quiet. And I said like music playing. And then I, when it was done, I looked and almost all of them put they like totally quiet. Oh. Said, okay, I'm no longer going to play music in the room. No, no, we like music. <gasps> okay. <laughs> so, so, I mean, they're six years old. So we know you have to kind of fluctuate, but you'll see like the one, you know, she likes cherries on her cupcakes. I think it'll be very <laughs> neat for them to look back at it. You know, yeah. when they're even a fourth, fifth, sixth grader, when they upload it to say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I answered that way. And I mean, it was a true sense of who that child is. So another question that I, I think has come up when I've been at the PTF BL convenings is that like students who learn best in the quiet, or maybe who work, think they work best by themselves or do work best by themselves, or they, they prefer reading to videos or videos to reading. At what point do teachers try to push that the, they can't always do it the way that works best or that they prefer? So when do you make a decision to push them outside of their box and challenge them to work with a partner instead of themselves for it? I would say that varies on depending on what you're doing. Like in the beginning, we're trying to get to know them, you know, giving this as their voice and choice. But as the months go on, the hey, you know, I noticed you always work by yourself. Why don't you let's try to work with somebody? And I don't know if there's a definite date deadline. It's just something that we start to see over time. And it's like let's let's try to, or you always want to work with a partner. How about you work by yourself this time? Board members, any other questions? Not, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.